GM everyone, happy Friday, and welcome to this edition to This Week in Frax. I'm your host, DeFi Dave, here with Capital K and Sam McCullough, Traders Insight as always. And this week, before we get it rolling, we have on Mr. Rhett Ship, and he's shipping over there at Gravita Protocol. They just had a major announcement with Frax Finance today about using a uh, staked Frax ETH in a very unique way. So, Rhett, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, it's great to have you. Uh, and uh, to get this started, uh, can you uh, let our viewers from home know what exactly is Gravita and how are you working with Frax? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so Gravita is a low cost borrow platform, um, protocol to peer, you know, think MakerDAO, um, and focused primarily on LSTs. Um, for those who are familiar with liquidity, we're a friendly fork of them. So we do a lot um, to be on the friendly side, but the functionality is very similar to liquidity. You deposit your ETH or your stake frax ETH as collateral. You mint GRI. That's like, you know, think like LUSD um, as your form of debt. And when you do that, you keep all the yield of your stake frax ETH. Um, you pay us a one-time half a percent borrow fee. Um, and you get a rebate if you close that debt position in less than six months. So you think if you borrow for six months or less, you're paying 1% APR. If you borrow long term, you paid a one time fee, no ongoing APR after that. Uh, so very low cost uh, place to borrow um, against your LSTs. And that's that's kind of the basics of it. So, like, you know, if you if you have liquidity as a baseline, it's multi collateral. And then there's this fee rebate to uh, make it more attractive for short term borrowers um, and otherwise very similar. It sounds, is it similar to Libra, I believe? Is that the name of it? Yeah, Libra is also a fork of liquidity. Um, there, um, there, there are some differences uh, where their stable coin has kind of like a baked in interest um, element. Um, there's a, it's like a rebasing stable coin. Um, and then they, in order to pay for that, they capture some of the yield. Um, so there's just there's just trade offs or different preferences, but it is it's a similar concept. So in ours, you keep all the yield yourself and there's especially if you're holding the stable coin, there's some nice things about being able to just hold that thing and capture the yield. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, and can you give a, the, our viewers a sense of how long have you guys been around and what do you what are your guys current stats? Like what's your TVL? You know, how much is borrowed? Um, could you give us a paint us a picture of that? Sure. Yeah. So we've been around. We we went live in May. Um, so oh, relatively new. new. Yeah. 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 Quite new. Um, we don't have a Gov token live yet. Uh, we're kind of growing. Yet. in Yeah. 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 Yet, yet, yet. <laughs> the governance framework may be needed. <laughs> yeah. It's um, it's been confirmed for a while that we will have one. Um, but yeah. But it's it's not live yet. We're throttling growth at the t at the moment, and that's you know we're we're pretty safety is pretty important to us. So we got three audits. We based our code on liquidity, and then we got three audits before launching. And then we also think the kind of rate limiting in the early days is a good thing. And so we have mint caps on all collateral types. We inch them up over time. Mm -hmm. um, TVL currently is about a little bit more than thirty million, um, and roughly fifteen million um, Gry borrowed. Um, 15 million, yeah, roughly 15 million Gray Borrow. So somewhere around there. Uh, we're live on Mainnet, the full app's live on Mainnet and Arbitrum, and the token's live in a handful of places, um, all L2. So we're, we're pretty kind of ETH centric. So mostly focus on LSTs as collateral, mostly focus on ETH and the L2s um, from a deployment standpoint. And for Frax lovers, you know, we, um, a, a few of the pools where Gray is incentivized are uh, with Frax. So we have a Gray Frax base pool, curve pool. We just barely finished getting some gauges for that and, and incentives on that pool went live just this week. And then nice. on um, on Arbitrum, we have a, a, an incentivized Gry Frax pool on Ramsey's. Um, so, yeah, we love Frax. We love, uh, you know, working with Frax and Stablecoin, but also State Frax ETH we think is great. And some of our users have been specifically asking for it since we launched because it's the highest yielding of the LSTs. So that's that's a really big really big deal, especially to certain users. And could you walk us through the process? Uh, let's say I have S Frax ETH, I want to get a stable going. Like I want I want to do some stuff more than just like chill on my S Frax ETH. How would I use Gravita? Like, what's the step by step process? Yeah, good question. So I, I would say there's kind of uh, there's a handful of ways to to go about using it. it depends on how degen you are, really. 
so starting at the DGEN level, you take some steak frac seeth, you would deposit in Gravita mint um, gray, take that gray, swap it back into steak frac seeth, add that to your collateral, wind that up a few times. Now you're levered long ETH and you're also getting leverage exposure to the um, yield and you're paying very low borrow costs to do so. Um, but you run the risk of blowing up if you don't manage your position well. So that's that's like the top degen thing. Um, you know, a, a little bit less degen of, a, of an approach is you say, okay, I just want to uh, get my stake frax ETH um, used a little bit more productively. I, and I hold some stables, say, for example. I hold some frax and some stake frax ETH. Take the stake frax ETH, mint gray against it, pair, pair it up with that frax and throw it into the Ramsey's pool or the um, or, or our... Um, uh, curve pool, for instance. So that's that's just kind of adding some stable coin yield. Um, and then the last thing, and this one's uh, kind of interesting, actually. So I didn't mention this at the start, but the way that we liquidate borrowers is through a stability pool. So it's similar to liquidity, uh, where there's a pool of GRI that people have deposited. And when someone gets liquidated, their all of their debt is burned out of the stability pool. And then all of their collateral is just pro rata distributed amongst the uh, stability pool providers. You can then take your liquidation bounty and you can say, well, I'm going to turn around and sell it back into stables, or I'm going to use that as a way to like add a discount kind of DCA into ETH. So you could take your stake frax ETH, mint gray, throw it in the stability pool. As you capture liquidations, either roll that into your collateral or sell them off into gray yield. If you are selling it off into gray yield, the way that I think of that pool is that it's, it, it's a yield bearing, um, it has yield kind of inverse to the market. So like when, when three AC blew up and when FTX blew up the liquidity stability pool, we weren't live yet. The liquidity stability pool yield went up to like almost 800%, mm -hmm. but it floats at a lower percentage um, when there's not as many liquidations. So you could think of it as like a stable coin yield venue that performs inverse. The yield performs inverse to like market conditions kind of um, that's if you're selling it off back into growth. And so, so what are the yield APY numbers like on, you know, Frax Base Pool, both on Mainnet and also on Ramsey's on Arbitrum? So on Mainnet, we're, we're brand new. Curve is reporting like it's like 20 to 60. Um, yeah. And Convex is projecting like 40-ish. Um, that's on, we have about a 1 point mil TVL in there right now. And some I've noticed sometimes the curve numbers take a little while to settle down. Yeah, um, yeah. That's what it's reporting currently. And we've been live a week. So take that with a grain of salt of uh, that seems uh -huh. accurate to us, but like, you know, uh, I've, I've seen sometimes those well? numbers can move zero um, or basically zero. We have, we, we, all we've done is a very small angel raise. We don't sit on a lot of protocol owned assets. Uh -huh. A little bit of that sitting in there, like, low five figures something like that yeah i think it's sitting in there but basically none of it is owned by us essentially none um and then the yield range on the ramsey's pool right now is it's like in the 10 to 30 um range so uh both of them double digits um uh yields right now um and we plan to continue incentivizing both of those um in the for the long long haul yeah and um where can people learn more about Gravita? Um, where can people go and actually use this product? And where can people find you? Uh, yeah, so my my handle everywhere is my name, uh, R-H-E-T-T-S-H-I-P-P. -P. So that's my Twitter handle. That's my Telegram handle. That's Always my name. Be shipping. You can look. Always be shipping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can look yeah. me up on LinkedIn, whatever. I, I feel like um, so that's that's my actual name. So that's where you can find me. Gravita Protocol um, is the uh, Twitter handle, and gravitaprotocol.com is is the website. Um, so uh, we also have a Discord. I would just go to our Twitter and navigate to the Discord there. We tend to be pretty active. If you come in and jump in and ask questions or whatever, uh, we'll we'll engage with you directly. So we try to stay on top of that. See, it's funny. I remember on the first Flywheel podcast we ever did, uh, one of my lines in the episode was "Fraxing, always be shipping, always be shipping." So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. just like I just had a flashback moment to that. But right, uh, thank you so much for hopping on with us. Uh, super cool product, really unique way for the Frax community to leverage their S Frax ETH and also participate in some new pools. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me.
do I just hit leave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can just <laughs> Then you roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. Nice. That's really cool. It's really cool to see friendly forks of uh, liquidy that are frax friendly as well. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I mean, that's always been a neat product in the space, like a liquidy yeah. product. The liquidy would never yeah. add any other assets. It's, so. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a cool mechanism they, they came up with. So, uh, anyways, uh, let's get to this week in frax. Sam, I'll hand it to you. Yeah, so interesting that he said if you have a bit of stake frax ETH and you have some stables, uh, because that was kind of the theme this week in chat after uh, Nolly came in and posted this nice little uh, discussion about how like frax is is like working after these two major uh, like themes, right? One being the stake frax ETH, and then also the stable on the other side. And it really doesn't. It's it's like two ends of a barbell strategy where. Uh, with Frax Bonds and then Stake Frax ETH, you can get yield on both uh, assets and you can go back and forth depending on what your risk tolerance is. Yeah, I, yeah, it's it's re real interesting. Like what what uh, Nolly, the Anon tweeted, when like what it like led to, it led to your article. Mm -hmm. And when I like, when I was reading through the article and when I was reading through Nolly's original message, what I was thinking of, Frax is really the fair weather protocol. I don't know if I read that somewhere, if I just like made it up, but it's the fair weather protocol, the protocol for all weather conditions, high yield environments, low yield environments. Uh, also like, what an awesome graphic. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, a great graphic. Like, yeah, it's it's like the same way, like Frax, Frax has been, is built for all conditions, like AMOs are built to re decollateralize as well as recollateralize. It's basically that same concept, but in, but instead of for the instead of the collateral, it's the yield, um, and so it's pretty yeah. interesting to see the, the frax still evolving. And I love seeing all the anons piecing together frax. It's kind of like you know, it's not like the commute like the core team announces, "Hey, we're doing this." It's so they like drop like hints. They drop hints. And then it's like a puzzle and then the anons just like put it together and then, you know, Sam may give him like a thumbs up or a fire emoji or some shit, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's I've... actually, you know, uh, this, this job here at flywheel pretty much writes itself. Like I don't have to have, ever come up with topics. They just kind of appear in the, <laughs> in the telegram chat and Nolly actually wrote this for me pretty much. Mm -hmm. Uh, because yeah, I had heard about, I'd read about the barbell strategy before. It's like Nassim Talib talks about it about uh, how you should like don't really go for the middle right so like you either go for high risk invest super high risk investments or you're like in super low risk investments and you don't really go in between because like if your high risk ones blow up then you're safe still like majority of your portfolio is still in low risk investments but if you're if your high risk ones like do well they do 100x or something like it carries mm -hmm. the whole portfolio and you should always have cash on hand to like buy the dips right <laughs> Like, uh, so like I, I've, I've, I've seen really good back testing for strategies, like uh, a couple of years back, like if you had been in like 80% gold and 20% Bitcoin from, I don't know, the, the mid 2010s, like it would have done really well. Right. Uh, even with all the gold in there and, you know, the frax bonds and in, in ETH now is kind of that strategy where, you know, depending on your allocations, you could be like, I don't know, 60, 70% in bonds. And then just, you know, have the other 20 to 30% of your entire portfolio just in ETH. And of course, it's going to go up and down a lot. But over the long term, hopefully it outperforms and, uh, you know, it, it acts as that barbell. This sounds like a great index product, too. You know, uh, maybe this is something like Stack Frax could finally come in and reemerge <laughs> and do this for the people. Uh, so I actually talked to Nali about this and he said that... Uh, well, he like to full disclosure, he does work uh, for Balancer or like work with Balancer uh, in in some Ooh. respects. So <clears throat> when he was thinking about it, he was thinking about a Balancer, a balancer pool, pool, yeah, that would have some sort of like Oracle feeding it data, and then it would adjust the the weighting of like you would have like a four year Frax bond paired together mm -hmm. with like Stake Frax ETH, and you would adjust the weighting of that so that uh, they would you know, balance each other out over time. Balance, you say. I'm exactly. balancing. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so 
I thought that was interesting. And I talked to Sam about it and uh, Sam really liked it. He said he's going to start using that uh, term as well too, the Frax barbell, uh, because it, it's kind of definitive of what Frax's strategy is, right? Where it's like either dollars or ETH, right? And, you know, Frax hasn't been out making like uh, LSDs on like Matic or any of the other L1s, right? Uh, mm -hmm. they've, they've really just stuck to their core ethos. And, uh, you know, that's that's two products, which is just the stable coin and then uh, stick Frax ETH. All gains with the barbell strategy. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you know, a Frax team, Sam is hitting the gym, hitting the gym. three hours a day, every day, <laughs> hitting the barbell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, shout out. Hey, uh, if you missed the IQ wiki, or sorry, the interview with Jay, Jay from IQ Times, uh, you should definitely go check that back because he actually talks about that in the interview where you can go to IQGBT <laughs> and uh, ask it, what are Sam's max lifts? <laughs> it's actually there. Yeah. It's there. He actually sent me a screenshot. I'll, I'll pull it up. Uh, it was a lot, actually. Um, you know, Sam's a very strong guy. So yeah. where is that one? Oh, okay. So his max bench. Okay, so... Max bench, one rep max is 350 pounds. Jeez. Max squat is like 445 and max deadlift is 560. So Sam's like well in the thousand, thousand pound club for- I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen yeah? It. Yeah, well, because we used to lift together at UCLA back in the day. And so I've seen him like push that weight. We would spot each other. <laughs> is he stronger than you? Is he stronger No, well, you? My, my max bench was like, at the time it was like, it must have been like 365 or something Jeez. Uh, and then yeah, my but, you, but you've got you've got like a few um, yeah my, i think my my squat might have been like either 395 or 495 i don't remember it was like uh, over four plates for sure um wow yeah my I, max I'm not bench was 305 so this is I crazy I, I, yeah no no i i because i play like i played football for so long i've been lifting weights since i was 13 so i just like yeah i, even, I haven't even lifted weights like all summer but I bet you can go to the gym and just like, I'll see you in, in Singapore. That, that oh, yeah, yeah. Gym we in have Singapore. to. Yeah. We have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in Singapore, there's like a gym. Uh, you can, there's like a, somebody who's in crypto has their own gym and is like opening it up for memberships for that week. And so me and Kit are going to go to the gym in Singapore. So if any of our viewers are in Singapore, Flywheel will be there and Flywheel will be at the gym. So we should do a meetup at the gym. Oh my God. You meet up. Yeah, we should, yeah. We should get and we should have Griff Shop do like a limited edition Frax weight belt that we give out. Oh, we can do like Frax barbell strategy shirts, or like some like <laughs> lifting gloves, or like a uh, uh, like leather belts. A did. literal two pound dumbbell like this that has Frax <laughs> and Frax E logo on it. <laughs> it's a paperweight that you can put on your desk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Um, Nolly was thankful for us writing this up. Uh, you know, we kind of took his idea and ran with it. And yeah, yeah. Uh, but speaking of Balancer, though, Balancer had a critical vulnerability that came out this week. F in the chat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I, I think they did a really good job, actually. They're they didn't really. Yeah, they didn't. I don't think that much was stolen, right? Nothing was. No. Yeah, nothing was. So, essentially, but, they came yeah. out. They said we found a critical vulnerability. Everybody needs to remove their their funds. We've uh, already migrated like 96% of, of all the funds that are at risk and only like 4% of, of balance of TBL was, was ever at risk. And it was mostly these like smaller, like, uh, just meme coins or something. Yeah. Uh, but like really good communication, actually they published, uh, they didn't publish the actual exploit, but they said there is one. Uh, and they told everybody to move and they got <laughs> get, get out. <laughs> get everybody get the fuck out. <laughs> you're, you're in danger. Um, we had a, a really nice. Um, oh, you know what? I don't think I can open these. Uh, let's see what else we had. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dave, I saw on, on Twitter that uh, people are getting their Griff Shop t shirts. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that was the giveaway we did. Uh, in honor of the website launch. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, 563 uh, was one of the winners and, you know, he got a shirt and he repped it, repped it on the timeline. You love to see it. Oh, that's probably like one of my favorite shirts that we've made is the. Yeah. The yeah. 
the cherry blossom like mm -hmm. it's super I nice yeah yeah here let me pull that up so if if anybody's wondering uh you can go to grift.shop <laughs> yeah. shout out grift uh there's actually a link in today's newsletter if you go to the bottom you'll see the uh the winning tweet of posting the shirt and then you can also come here to grift shop and get your own this is actually really cool really support cool. the channel buy the shirt yeah this is a very cool design yeah honestly. i think so too it's very nice uh very fraxianitos like pulling the apple from the tree and <laughs> hey look it's even it's even the uh cherry blossom tree yep. yeah that's what, yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> oh that's pretty cool yeah um so Definitely Go get that it. right now. We'll have a link below in the description too. If you just want yeah. to like pop, support the channel, buy the merch. Uh, let's see what else. Oh yeah, we last week we posted a, uh, a guide on single sided FXS FXS yield, uh, which was pretty cool. And um, if you were following the timeline, you also saw that Groom Lake has posted that we're going to be having an interview with him. He posted yesterday. Yeah, that was such an awesome interview. Honestly. <sighs> I was yeah. just like, like FDR just, it's just business, dude. It's just, <laughs> yeah. it's just straight business. You can just tell, you can just tell like he, he's just, he's just a bad, bad man, but in the best way <laughs> for <Yeah>. the community. <laughs> he's our guy. <laughs> he's our yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. want to be on the other side of, of FDR. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we also had the tornado cash news come out today, unfortunately, uh, oh, or sorry. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, yesterday or yeah. two days ago now um and yeah it's really unfortunate that these guys got rolled up for shipping code man for shipping code, code. but it was the wrong <laughs> it's it's bad yeah. yeah yeah and 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 we also talked about it um during uh, the, the pod, yeah. so here's, here's like a little sneak peek uh he's, you know the government did that because they had no solution for it you know that they had to apply pressure elsewhere so you know that just yeah, tells was, you how effective you know tornado yeah, is what's interesting is and i said this on the pod as well uh the sanctions against the devs did not come right when they sanctioned the protocol a year ago mm -hmm. they came a year after after you know? after the decision yeah after the sanctions, the blacklist tornado cash mm -hmm. well after the decision uh the challenge remember the challenge to tornado cash just was decided like last week remember um oh uh, the one that coinbase had come on it too as well um oh, so the challenge was decided and then mm. after the challenge they issued the sanction yes what what was the ruling exactly last week uh essentially that like tornado cash was an entity that could be that could have this OFAC sanction against it uh and that you know everybody around it from like the relayers to the uh, developers to everybody else was like caught up in that association um and so it wasn't just that it was like code on the internet somewhere um it, alex Golubitsky and i were talking about this today this morning how like one of the things that tornado cash probably messed up on was issuing a token they had a perfectly working privacy layer which seemed to work right for for everybody and they by it introducing worked, it worked too well it worked, yeah it worked too well yeah so by introducing by introducing this token it it added this layer of or this like argument for profitability now so like for, for, of responsibility yeah so it's mm. it, i don't know if they just released the code and said this is it and we're gonna disappear into the ether especially with like stuff that like touches on these like gray areas like that um if they just released the code and like disappeared forever and worked on different stuff and kind of were like hands off but instead you know they went on they were like they were like maintaining the front ends um they were uh, issuing these tokens and doing all these other stuff that like north korea was using obviously and that ran afoul and alex told us today that when it comes to uh, national security issues the judiciary really just typically signs off on anything like they see OFAC they see you know North Korea and it's like okay yeah <laughs> like sure we'll sign off on that. I'm not I'm they, they're like okay I'm not going to be the one that's standing in the way of the executive branch trying to sanction somebody right like 
these are not U.S. citizens. Uh, you know, one's living in Dubai, um, and mm -hmm. you know, it's North Korea. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so th we also had some some great links. Uh, so let me talk about some of the things that are in the newsletter uh, this week. So I went back and I went through all the different like past week of chats, and I pulled out all the questions that were asked to Sam. Uh, over the week, we've got stuff on Fraxlin and permissionless pools, uh, like BAM, FraxSwap, FXBs, uh, Oracles, Curve V3. All this is in the newsletter that you can check out uh, by going to the link and going to read about it. Also, we have a bunch of other uh, links that you can read. There's a really interesting article that, that uh, I found about the dollar black markets of mm. Argentina. Which I think is like, if if you want to get it, if you want to know more about how stable coins are used outside the United States, this is like require reading because Argentina is is one of the like flashpoints right now for for stable coin usage, and it's interesting to see how the markets have evolved from using like cash and dollar bills to starting to use tether, um, and it should not potentially open up developers' minds when thinking about how to build products that that could use Frax. Yeah, like very liquid OTC stablecoin markets there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also some eigenlayer news where they raised the cap again up to, up another hundred thousand ETH. Uh, so you can take your stake frax ETH and go deposit it there. They also had a token this week, or not a token, but an NFT mint as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I so, tried. I was a couple hours late, and the link stopped working. <laughs> the link stopped working. Well, it's up still. I believe it's up for six days. So, you should have more than enough time to go mint an Eigen World NFT. I don't know what they're for. Like, we'll find yeah. out soon enough. Yeah, maybe it's for uh, yeah. you know distributing responsibility. Yeah, and our last big story for today was that Bitthumb listed FXS, Bitthumb Woo! Korean exchange. That's big. The largest. Wow. The largest. I and wonder the if... price went down. Who <laughs> did? <laughs> no, it just it just rallied like a tiny bit, <laughs> and then it went down. <laughs> I mean, like Korean markets are crazy, man. So I wonder, like, what this means for Frax being listed on Bithum. Actually, can we um, can we have a uh, a Napgener welfare check? I uh, feel like he's doing psyops. You think so? He's doing the Jijin strategy. Jijin Spartan, let me fud my bag, psyops. Or he's just schizo. He, well, he's like, well, that Jenner is like my. He's my favorite schizo. I know he's <laughs> he's taken over my timeline, and I think like he's really been making waves for his uh, for bear his bear posting recently. I think he's just having a lot of fun. You think so? I yeah. did, I read this and it doesn't seem like fun. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's just having a schizo episode. Uh, but he talked about uh, he talked about why he dumped his frax bags because he's actually uh, this has been a constant theme in the. Uh, why did he dump his frax bags? The frax trading channel is he's been running. He he had four hundred thousand FXS that he twammed out of over the past few weeks. Why he wait, he left the trading channel. Uh, he was never in the, he's never in the trading channel. He's not uh, like he's... active on telegram. I don't think, uh, no. but he essentially said, I, I was re like cruising his timeline yesterday and he said that he dumped frax because of the friend res announcement. Oh yes. Yeah. Which I don't understand. Um, What's yeah. well, you know that like nap Jenner has like, is originally like a synthetics person and he had like six different identities in the, synthetics discord like samantha and they were all like talking to each other <laughs> no I'm, de I'm dead serious too this is like this is some like deep lore about like nap Jenner and synthetics <laughs> i wish we could get him on for an interview I don't know. Uh, <laughs> if you're listening please we love out. you nap Jenner. we want to hear your side yeah exactly but we, we or whatever to, your name is we want to embrace the embrace the pain bring us into your world maybe um, he just needs to take a nap <laughs> you be uh, awake, that's, Jenner. Well, that's going to wrap it up. That's all I got for this week. Yeah, that's another a strong showing this week in Frax. We're hitting the gym. 
with the barbell strategy. Make sure to get those, uh, to be consistent, get those PRs up, uh, get those yields up. Um, and yeah, we'll be here next week. But before we go, make sure you go and hit that bell button, subscribe, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. Give us a like, give, show us your support. Subscribe to flywheel.com, new website, new everything. It's dope. Go see that. Uh, subscribe right now. Check out our merch on the Griff Shop. Go get your cherry blossoms. Go get your Japan tea. We have a six sweatshirt as well. Go get your merch down below. Griff Shop. Shout out Grift. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Flywheel DeFi. Join the Telegram group at Flywheel DeFi. You can follow me on Twitter at DeFi Dave Twenty Two. You can follow me at Zero X Capital Underscore K. And I'm at Traders Underscore Inside. And we will see you next week. Peace. 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 Ha, ha, ha.